Hello everyone, welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Today is Wednesday, February 24th. We're going to be going over some DFS picks for today on both DraftKings and FanDuel. But before we get started, we're going to take a look at yesterday's picks, see how they turned out. So on the DraftKings side, we had De'Aaron Fox, $8,000. Looking for about 40 fantasy points out of him. He got to 42.75, so he is definitely a hit. Then we had Kyrie Irving. $8,800, looking for about 44 fantasy points out of him. He got to 43.25, so it was a little bit under. I'm not going to call it quite a miss because it really was close, so it's just going to be a push. Wouldn't have killed you if you did play him. Then Josh Richardson, $4,700. We're looking for about 23, 24 points out of him. He was a push as well. Looking for about 23 and a half. He got 23. And then Zeke Najee, $3,100. Looking for about 16 fantasy points out of him. He got 16.75, so he was a hit. Then Tristan Thompson, $4,400, looking for about 22 fantasy points out of him. Got to 24 and a half, so he was a hit as well. Then on the FanDuel side, we had Darius Garland, $5,900, looking for 29 and a half, 30 fantasy points out of him. Got to 32.4, definitely a hit there once again. Josh Jackson, $5,100, looking for about 26 fantasy points out of him. He got to 30.4, so he was a hit. Evan Fournier, probably one of the biggest letdowns of the day. $6,800, looking for 34 fantasy points out of him. Only got to 22.1, so he was a mess if you played him. Probably hurt your lineup quite a bit, honestly. The only lineup that I had on FanDuel that didn't cash, I had Fournier and Gallinari, and they just tanked the lineup. But overall, it was a pretty good day otherwise. So Then Daniel Tice, $4,900, looking for 24, 25 points out of him. Got 13.6. So he's definitely a mess there. Just didn't produce in the minutes that he did play yesterday. And then Jared Allen, $7,600. Looking for 38 fantasy points out of him. We got 47.8, so he was definitely a hit. But with that being said, we're going to get over to today's games. Look at the injuries, the major ones that are in play for today. So for the Boston Celtics, the only change is Kemba Walker's out resting on the back-to-back. They have it projected as the same starting lineup as the last time he rested, but it'll be real interesting to see who that fifth starter is. Is it Javante Green? Is it Neesmith? Is it Pritchard? Whoever it is could have a little bit of value, probably more so on the DraftKings side. Then for the Hawks, pretty much it's the same guys out. Cam Reddish is doubtful, so he's probably going to be out once again. The major thing we got to look out for, though, is John Collins. Suffered a concussion last night, left the game. Hurt one of my fan to lineups doing so, but... You know, if he doesn't play, it's going to open up some more minutes for guys like Tony Snell, guys like Solomon Hill, and probably some more minutes for Gallinari as well. On the Rockets side, P.J. Tucker's probable. He's probably going to play. Eric Gordon, Victor Oladipo, they're both questionable. Just keep an eye out on those two guys. If they both don't play, David Nawaba, Sterling Brown probably have some more value. Then for the Cleveland Cavaliers, Torian Prince is likely to play today, so he's probably going to be in that starting lineup. You can play him if you want to. I just can't get there myself. His price is still just a little bit too much. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. Golden State Warriors, just like yesterday, they're finally all the way healthy. Pacers are exactly the same as they've been. They've been on a little bit of a layoff recently, too. So don't be surprised if their guys come out a little bit slow. For the Pistons, it's exactly the same as yesterday, besides Wayne Ellington, who was resting yesterday on the front half of the back-to-back. For the Pelican side, we're just looking at Steven Adams. Probable, likely he plays. If he doesn't play, Willie Herman Gomez is going to be in play once again. And then for the Timberwolves, Jared Culver is probable now. So there's a chance he plays. If he plays, he's going to get some bench minutes. Probably hurt some guys more overall. Probably not a guy that you want to play himself and some of the guys that he's going to be splitting some minutes with. It's probably going to knock them down quite a bit as well. Then for the Chicago Bulls, pretty much the same. Chandler Hutchinson is probable now, so we'll see if he ends up playing or not. I don't think if he does end up playing, I don't think it changes too much overall, though. Then it looks like Kyle Lowry is probable now, game time decision. So we'll see if he's back in the starting lineup. If he is, it obviously knocks Bembry out, and it knocks Fred Van Fleet, Norman Powell, Pascal Siakam down a little bit as well. Then for the Miami Heat, this is a game to watch out for here. So Silva, Hero, and Dragic are all game time decisions right now. If Tyler Hero and Garin Dragic both play in this game, none becomes pretty much a guy that you don't want to play. Robinson's probably not a guy that you want to play either. If they're both out, Robinson and none definitely get a boost up, though. Then for the Spurs, this is the big value game today. So DeMar DeRozan, Rudy Gay, Kelton Johnson, Devin Vassell, 
and Derek White. There's five key players on their team that aren't going to be playing today. You're going to be looking at Murray a lot today. You're going to be looking a lot at Patty Mills, Lonnie Walker. LaMarcus Aldridge is definitely in play. If he ends up playing, he's available to play, they said. Not listed with his injury. See how many minutes he does end up playing. If he doesn't play for some reason as we get closer to game time, or if he comes off the bench, Trey Lyles could be in play as well. Then for Oklahoma City, just looking at George Hill out still. Then for the Charlotte Hornets, Devontae Graham's out once again. Martin's out once again. Gordon Hayward's probable. He's dealing with some kind of thumb or hand injury, if I remember correctly. Uh, Abdul Nader on the other side. He's game time decision. He doesn't really matter either way, honestly. Then the Lakers are exactly the same as they've been the last two games. And then for Utah, the only one they have is Yudoka Azabuki out with his ankle injury. So overall, quite a few injuries there. Quite a few situations that we're going to be watching the news for as it comes out today. As always, I will be posting all the news updates down in the comments. So make sure you're looking there as well. But with that being said, we're going to move over to DraftKings, talk about my picks over there. And first off, point guard position. Probably one of the guys that's going to be the highest owned today, honestly, Saban Lee. He's $3,800, looking for about 19, 20 fantasy points out of him. He's been playing really well, getting all the minutes lately with DeLon right out. He hasn't been starting, but he's been getting more run than Dennis Smith Jr. overall. So definitely a guy that should get you that value that you need for his price tag. Still priced down a little bit too much. He does go against the Pelicans. Lonzo Ball is a pretty decent defender. I don't mind playing Lonzo Ball today either on both sides. So it definitely could be an interesting day if you want to stack that matchup just a little bit. Then at shooting guard, we got Kevin Herter. $5,400 looking for about 27 fantasy points out of him. There's no Cam Reddish in this game. John Collins might not end up playing. So he could find his way into a little bit more usage, a couple more shots or two here and there. Then we have Jason Tatum, $9,200. Kemba Walker's not playing. He's going to get that bump up. You're, all, you're looking for about 46 fantasy points out of him. That's what he's been averaging this season. He's been up over 50 or real close to it in recent games as well. Then at center, we got Wendell Carter Jr., $5,800, looking for 29 fantasy points. That's almost what he's averaging this season. Minnesota hasn't been too great against the front court. A little bit better since Carl Anthony Towns has returned. He's a guy I do like playing as well today against the Bulls because the Bulls' front court's not anything special on defense either. But if you go with these five guys that I have here for today, you're going to have $19,800 left over, about $6,600 per player. So you definitely can pay up for another guy. There should be some other value coming out today. You know, you can play Patty Mills. You can play Lonnie Walker. You can play DeJounte Murray. You can play any of these um, Spurs guys, actually. And with that being said, I forgot LaMarcus Aldridge there. So he's actually $6,000, looking for about 30 fantasy points out of him. If he gets the minutes, he's definitely going to produce today. He's going to be one of the main key cogs of their offense. But there is a situation where they could get down and he just doesn't play the minutes. So just kind of be wary of that one. And now we're going to get over to the FanDuel picks. So on the FanDuel side, we have Patty Mills, $3,800. Looking for 19 fantasy points out of him. Averages almost 21 this season. So he's already a value just doing what he's already been doing this year. Now he's going to be playing more minutes. He might end up starting in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't start, but he should still see plenty of minutes in this one. Lonnie Walker, next up, shooting guard, flat minimum, $3,500. Looking for about 18 fantasy points out of him. That's what he averages this season. He should blow that out of the water with how many minutes he's probably going to have to play in this game. At small forward, we got Jalen Brown, $8,400. You're looking for about 42 fantasy points out of him. Kind of like what I said with Jason Tatum, no Kemba Walker. He's going to get an increased usage rate. He's going to get increased assist rate as well, so he's definitely a guy that should pay off today. Going against an Atlanta Hawks team that's a little bit of a pace-up spot as well. Then at the power forward position, we got P.J. Washington, $5,600. You're looking for about 28 fantasy points out of him. That's what he's averaging on the season. He just came back two games ago, played 32 and 30 minutes the last two games, over 30 fantasy points the last time out. Definitely a guy that you can consider in this matchup. Should be a pretty good one for him overall. As long as this game stays competitive, he should see 30-plus minutes. And then at center position, we're going to go dirt cheap bottom of the barrel, Justin Patton. $3,500. You're looking for 18 fantasy points out of him. He got 20.2 the last game, which was his first game of the season. DeMarcus Cousins is no longer on the team. They don't have a real other center. I know P.J. Walker plays center a little bit. I know they throw Jay Sean Tate there a little bit too, but those are not centers. He's the only center on their team. 
probably going to get 20 to 24 minutes in this game. I think he's a guy that can definitely pay off for that $3,500 price tag. And he's and if you play him there, you're definitely going to open up some other possibilities throughout your lineup. If you go with these five guys, you have $35,200 left over. That's $8,800 per player remaining. You can easily pay up for a bunch of guys today with this core five. And I mean, you can go with Patty Mills. You can go with DeJounte Murray. You can go Spurs heavy if you want to. You can go with LeBron James. You can go with Steph Curry. You can go with Zach Levine, DeMonta Sabonis. Just pick your poison, honestly, when you have this cheap of a core starting out. But with that being said, these are my picks for both FanDuel and DraftKings for today. As always, if you guys have any questions regarding NBA DFS, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. Definitely here to help you guys out. And as always, I'll be leaving the news and the starting lineups down in the comments as it comes out throughout the day. Definitely want to make sure you're looking at that throughout the day as it comes out. But with that being said, if you guys are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. It really helps build the channel that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports. And that's really one for you, the viewers, helping you guys with your DFS, whether it's NBA or NFL, helping you guys with your fantasy football, covering all the different football news as it comes out this offseason. And as we move forward into baseball season, we're going to be talking some fantasy baseball and some baseball news as well. If you are new or current subscribers yet to do so, also hit that notification bell down below. It's going to let you know every single time I post up a new video. Like I've been saying, NBA DFS videos every single day. News updates on those videos as it comes out. Starting lineups as they come out. You want to make sure that you're not missing this stuff because it's valuable information. And it's going to help you guys with your NBA DFS process throughout the day. But with that being said, that's all I got for today's video. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed. Hopefully you guys all do very, very well in NBA DFS. Definitely a slate that you can go stars and studs very easy. You can go balance builds. There's lots of value out there, and there's probably going to be even more as the day progresses. And once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your day to watch today's video. It definitely means a lot to me, and I hope each and every one of you has a great rest of your day.